What's up, everybody? Uh, looks like old man winter is finally starting to come to Cleveland. It's getting nasty out again. Uh, guys, we're on our way right now to a 2020 Ford Transit uh, van that has a HVAC control module issue. Guys, I programmed the HVAC control module on this vehicle one time. Um, I had weird issues with it about two months ago. It, it programmed, this is an FDRS vehicle. Uh, as at, just at home, I tried to make a video of my lookup procedure of uh, in all data, showing you guys what I'm gonna check when I get here, but I didn't turn my mic on. So bummed about that. Anyways, uh, but I might share that later or I'll have to voice over or redo that section for y'all. But uh, we're on our way here. Basically, this HVAC control module falls offline sometimes. It, it just loses communication. Um, customers' complaint is all kinds of stuff about the HVAC system. So I'm really excited to go and scope out the CAN bus. This is the medium speed CAN out of the gateway control module that goes over to this uh, HVAC control module. Uh, the customer says it doesn't have communication. They said that the powers and grounds were good, but we're gonna double check all that and see what we come up with. So I'm gonna take you along once we get there. All right, guys, as you see, we're getting FDRS up and running here. Uh, this is the gateway module. Just so you know, your DLC plugs directly into this little guy down here, and the whole, all the networks come out of that. So very interesting stuff. And as I said, the uh, HVAC module is up over here. And if I'm not mistaken, Doug, this does lose communication. It, it, I mean, I think I remember that right. It would communicate, and then it wouldn't communicate. Stuff would come on and offline. And this unplugged over here, what is that for the uh, auto, start. auto? Oh, oh, it doesn't have that, right? So we do not have an auto start stop. This would be the circuit where the button uh, or whatever would plug in up here for, for the uh, you know stop start system, but we don't have that. And that's one thing that was interesting. I think even on a pre-scan, this vehicle set a code for that. So we don't have that system. So I'm gonna get logged into FDRS and we're gonna take a look what's going on. Logging into the FDRS, uh, you do have to select your device and you click on the read VIN from vehicle button and it'll pick it up. From here, you go ahead and hit the go button. And at this point, it downloads all the vehicle information. Guys, you can't do a lot of the functions here uh, without being hooked up to the internet. You can do some stuff offline, but uh, we do have uh, some functions that are just not available without being online. So it does take a second to get going here. And as you see, it says it's performing a network test, reading modules and DTCs. And as you see, this takes a while. I did fast forward this. This is about, probably about 45 seconds. So we get to this page here. Oh, there we go. And you can see that we do have uh, codes in a lot of modules. We've got a lot of stuff going on here. You can see uh, that this uh, gray module is not responding. So Doug, you're right on right now. The HVAC module is definitely not responding, not on the network. And what I'm gonna do is hit the continue button. And I would like to run a network test just to see what's up here. Or uh, actually, let's do a self-test, I'm sorry. Let's go ahead and run a complete DTC test. I'm still learning FDRS. I don't uh, have a lot of experience with it. It's not every day I get to use it. So we're gonna run all continuous memory DTCs to get a look at everything going on with this vehicle. And uh, as that's doing a scan, I am hooking up the battery maintainer. So we set ignition state to key on, engine off, continue. I just had to hook up my maintainer there. And we have uh, interesting stuff here. This actually gives us a time stamp on, the, uh, on all the uh, codes when they set, exactly how many days and how many hours ago it was set. Pretty sweet. But as you see, we have a lot of codes going on. Driver mode select range performance, vehicle dynamics control circuit, which I believe is because that front interface model's off. I believe the traction control switch is right up over here okay cool we got that so we got a lot of abs codes let's go ahead and see what else we got we have battery voltage codes uh guys there's so many codes here uh that i think we should do real quick is make a report let's see how this works print dtc results table i'm going to print this out so i keep a list of this for me and where did it print to let's see we want to print the pdf print let's see how this looks there we go. So here's our pre-scan report right from the FDRS scan tool. So you can see we have everything listed there. And at this point, I think, uh, to be honest with you, I'm going to clear and retest. Let's clear this all out and see what pops back right away. Sometimes that's uh, the best thing for me to do. Make sure my audio is still going here. I got a new mic and I'm learning how to use it, guys. All right, so we have driver mode select switch performance. 
uh, switch A performance in the ABS module, loss of communication with the front interface control module. We have our HVAC module not responding and loss of communication with the body control module with IPC. IPC saying it couldn't talk to the BCM. Wow. So we really do have a lot of stuff going on here. I'm thinking that I want to go after the customer concern about this module not responding. So if you remember back on all data, actually I should say I didn't uh, have audio with my video there. I did look up an all data on this vehicle and bookmark before I left the house this morning, I bookmarked the uh, stuff that I want to see here. So we'll go to that vehicle and click on our bookmarks. And we have the module communications network. I think it was a uh, violet and orange and a green and red maybe, or let's see, I forget. Wait, I'm on all day to load up, come on. Vi uh, green, orange, and violet and orange. Uh, this is the HVAC module, seven, terminal 17 and 18, right, Doug? And we'll take a look back here. So that is the HVAC control module right there. I would like to see uh, maybe if I can get the cap off of this thing because uh, when these caps are here, it can be really difficult to get in the wire. We can actually back probe, or should I say pierce probe these wires. I don't like the pierce probe. I'm not so worried when we're on the interior of a vehicle. But I'm thinking we could pierce probe real quick or we could uh, turn the key off. Let me turn the key off and you, you want to unplug that and see, see what else is going on. So I don't know if we can still plug this in. I think there's a way that slides out, uh, slide it by die out of there and I can back probe. So I'm gonna put the camera down and work on that real quick. Just so you know, this little cap uh, end piece slid off really easily, uh, very easy to unplug. But when you take this off, just so you can see here, you are kind of taking away the guidance for the terminals that they plug in. So something to be real careful about because now you got these terminals kind of all exposed. If you plug it in properly, you will have a problem. So uh, the CAN bus is this twisted pair here, and we're gonna get our scope out and uh, see what we get. All right guys, just so you know, I'm using this battery negative post. This is actually a body ground. It may not be the battery, the battery's underneath the seat, but I am hooked to a jumper wire here uh, to use as my ground reference on the scope. Um, and the first thing I'm probably gonna do is always test my scope just to make sure I have uh, a result that I expect. You know, it's almost like testing your test leads. Um, so let's see here, we got our scope running. This is Pico uh, 7 early access, I think for the test and measurement. This is the Pico 22058, this is the less expensive scope. So I'm just gonna go back here and uh, turn the key on. And uh, well, let's just test what we got on our CAN bus if I can get in there real quick. And this is back probing with the module unplugged, of course. But as you see here, we do have, we did have a pattern. So let me go ahead and I'm gonna back probe this in there real quick. And uh, we're seeing about a two and a half volt uh, bias. This is the can, can high. It looks a little noisy, but it's not terrible, I don't think. So we got a signal up there. And then let's see, just, oh. This is our can load, this does not look good. I think we can all agree about that. Something's up with it. So your can high and can low form together. The difference between those on a can bus is what the computers are seeing. So um, we need to take a look at this uh, diagram on this bus for this vehicle and figure out where we're losing the signal. Cause that, that definitely did not look good. Um, and Doug, what color wire was I on there? Well, which, which circle was that? That's the, uh, the purple. that's on the purple wire there, back probe. This is with the module disconnected, guys. I don't have it plugged in, so I honestly don't know what the signal would look like with it plugged in. We could probably try that real quick just to make sure. I don't, where did you say the uh, CAN bus resistors were, Doug? Did you know where those were or not? Okay, so. One's in this module right here. So this plugs in, which way is this plug in? Probably like that, right? Um, we're gonna take a look. And that was on a purple wire. I'm gonna make sure I still have a crappy signal. Yes, that's a crappy signal. And this is very difficult to plug in. Uh, let me show you guys. I am afraid uh, that I'm gonna miss something up. There's so much slop in this connector that I can easily damage a connector. So what I might do is pierce probe uh, that uh, purple and violet wire and then 
uh, put that cover back on. That's what we're going to do right now. Let me go, oops, there goes a horn. A horn works. The car doesn't, but the horn does. We have that plugged in there, and you see the change in the pattern. I saw it looking good and then bad. Check that out. Check this out, Doug. Uh, the pattern is good and then bad. We got like a module trying to communicate over and over again when you see this over hit, 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 hit. Somebody's trying to talk, but the message isn't getting out there. So I think I got to add another channel to the PicoScope. I want to go ahead and uh, take a look at what the high speed looks like as this is happening. All right, so we've got that other lead plugged in. So we're monitoring uh, medium speed can high and low at the HVAC model with it plugged in. And we're going to take a look, see here and see what it looks like when we turn on channel B. We'll put this to the same scale, plus or minus 10 volts. And uh, coupling DC and enter. So what do we have here, guys? Uh-oh, we have a, <laughs> there's a issue. Reading the same signal. Now I didn't know which one was high and which was low, but let's put this to zero here so you can see uh, our red lead is kind of uh, shorted high. Let me direct, drop down a cursor here so you guys can see this. There's two and a half volts and on a red, and then here's, here, let me just type this in. Let's just see where our two, type in two and a half, 2.5 there, and we'll type in 2.5 over here, just so we get an idea of where we should be. So it looks like the red trace is shorted high as you see, that's up around 3.8 volts or not. I'm getting mixed up, but every once in a while I have a good pattern here. So at this point, I'm thinking we gotta go throughout the rest of the vehicle and see uh, what else we have. We could go at the gateway module and see if the signal looks exactly the same. That's pretty easy to back probe down there. Um, or I can see if there's a connector in line that's easy to access, but that module, that, that doesn't look right. Yeah, I guess we have a I'm always working on different options to do here. All right, so I'm looking at this diagram here, guys, and I'm thinking which way we want to go. We're over here, and the pattern doesn't look right. Let's go back down the pipe. There's C300. Uh, we've got, this is a medium roof van, so we've got the radio transceiver module. Do you know where the radio transceiver module is, Doug, or not? No? Back there? All right, so let me look at another diagram. I'm going to go to 1410 here. We're just going to work backwards through our diagrams and see if I can find myself a nice, easy connector to look at. Um, excuse me. We can look at this C3134. Let's go ahead and open up another tab of all data. And I'm looking for this truck, C3134. Lower right rear side of vehicle. What? Let's see, where does this, where does this look like it is? Um, there's the connector, a lot of stuff going on there. That, well, it, the description was not very good here. Let me reread that. Um, oh, where did it go? Um, hold on, that was not, let me hit the back button a couple times. I had it where it uh, had told me. It says lower right rear side of vehicle. That doesn't, is it inside the vehicle? Let's try doing a connector index view. C3134. From this page, I'm going to go control F and type in C3134. Um, oh. Passenger presence detection front center in line. What is this? Hold on. What is this? These column titles here. Let's take a look here. So, oh, nope, that's just a huge list of connectors. It's not really. I thought that this was going across showing you where it is. It's an inline connector. Click on the hyperlink. It gives me this picture. It's not telling me where it is. There's a lot of stuff going there. We have a lot of different. Uh, as you see, here's our VDB06. That's going to be our CAN. Um, locations, connectors. I'm typing 3134 here. Let's see if we can get a picture. This has got to be the hardest thing sometimes. So here we are. It's inside the cab. It looks to be inside. C 
31, 34. Here we are right here. So it's above the rear wheel well back there. Probably got a bunch. <laughs> What do you think, guys? You think it might have a bunch of chemicals getting dropped on it? <laughs> I don't know. We're going to take a look. Just see if we can get to this connector. Let's see, um, a lot of these uh, cleaning vans have caustic materials. I think that's the word for it. But uh, let me see if I can get in here without tripping over myself and see what's up. Poking my head around, I'm looking for this connector. I'm just trying to find an easy place to divide the network and see see what our patterns look like. And it is nasty in there. Whew. Um, there are. Uh, hold on. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sure. There you go. Is it too heavy? Here, I get this side. I don't know how heavy this thing is. Is it in your ramp? Uh, okay. Oh man, well, I'm just looking at uh, all kinds of, oh boy, all kinds of good stuff that could be going on. This uh, has a cleaner feel to it. It's probably not good for our skin, but uh, I want to find a C3134, and I think, and the picture showed it right above the wheel well. And there's a, we got this harness here. It's a bigger connector. It might even be this guy here. Um, do we have any violet and orange and gray and orange? Maybe not. There's a bigger connector that goes up this way. Let me go look at my connector diagram again. And then also, uh, oh, that's nasty. This thing's only a 2020. Two years old, man. This thing looks like it's 50 years old. C3134. It's a big one over here. So where those holes are, it's behind, it looks to be behind that. Now it was interesting. This diagram was not lining up to what service information uh, stated as far as where that connector was. So we decided to go ahead and unplug that connector and then go ahead and see what the scope showed. And this is what we had. We had a flat line, so we knew we were on the right connector. Or you can watch the scope or you can plug it in. So uh, Doug's running back to that corroded connector to plug it in. Before you plug it in, let me take a picture of it, actually. Let's get a look-see of that, because that is 100% uh, nasty. Oh, man, look at this. So we've got definitely some corrosion issues going on here. I'm trying to get that camera to go. No, it won't go in there, but uh, you can see on this end, for sure, guys, we've got an issue going on. Um, now that signal went dead uh, when, when we unplugged it. And that key is uh, in the run position here. We do have our probe still in. So go ahead and plug it back in. Oh, it looked good for a second. So let's go ahead and try and jump a couple wires back there to bypass this baloney. Because uh, that pattern doesn't look good, and it looked good for a second. It looks good for a second, man. All right. I think we might be on to something, ladies and gentlemen. Orange and purple. Purple, violet, orange, purple. Sweet. Let's, uh, what we can do, um, we, you got to fix, we got to fix this for sure, no doubt about it. But I'm thinking if we can, one or two things, this jumper, my, um, let me make sure we got our purple and violet. Usually you'll see the CAN bus will be taped together. So check this out. It's hard to see, but the CAN bus actually, come on, camera, focus. The CAN bus actually gets taped together. You'll see the twisted pair start, so you know you're onto it. And I bet you, well, that's so weird. Hold on. There's like two wires in this harness. Everything else goes back and forth. I don't think if we were to open this up, this little tiny harness, there might just be a CAN bus on here. The rest of this uh, harness might just be dummy stuff. Um, so I don't know that for a fact, but if I can, if you hold that, I'm going to give this a good old fit. Oh, we can pull it through here. I'm going to try and open this up and see what wires we have. Uh, can you hold the camera right there for a second? I'm going to see what wires we may have right here. Uh, no, it looks like, guys, that's not our CAN bus color, is it? But the pattern changes when we plug it in, plug it out. So, oh, it loops. Check this out. This pattern, this thing just does a loop-de-do. 
Guys, let me cut this open here. All we have going on here is a little loop. This, uh, whatever they call this, Tefa tape or something? Tessa tape? Super tough, man. Try not to cut my finger open. Don't want to pull back a bloody stump here. And our audio's recording. <laughs> That's good. I've been having troubles lately. It's been a rough day. So our CAN bus, medium speed CAN bus, loops around right here. So it's all it is is a dumb loop. You can see we have our CAN bus wires right there. So all we have to do is bypass them up here, over here. Um, we'll take the camera a little bit so you can see this. This, this one goes up, and this is going to be a little more challenging, but uh, maybe we can do one of two things. We can depin our CAN bus wires. That might be an idea. Pop those guys out of there. Oh, man, that is tough stuff. What do we got? We got uh, the violet and purple and that. So, yeah, we got to either clean up this connector or I'm thinking we could just jump them, you know, splice them back together, keep, their, keep our water, water colors the same, keep our gray and orange and our violet and purple. Which terminal do those go to on here? They go, they go above each other there, and then they come back and go there. All right, guys, we're about to make a temporary repair back here. We're going to get some strippers and see what's going on. Guys, if you don't understand how to use your PicoScope, or if you want to get more experience with CAN bus testing and different uh, things, especially using a scope, I mean, I'm telling you, PicoScope, Snap-on scope, this would be a tough problem, in my opinion, to find without a scope. How else would you do it. You could maybe look at voltages and stuff. Um, maybe I got lucky. We'll see. I don't know if it, uh, it's going to fix it, but the vehicle's not fixed yet, so we're going to find out here. We're going to get a little, some little stripper action. And, uh, whoops, you, you want to hold in. So we, we're just going to, uh, these are not my strippers, so I don't know how well they work. Do these one at a time, uh, and we're just going to chumper these things together. Um, yeah, this might, okay, there we go. I'm, I'm looking here, guys, and it's always different using tools you're not familiar with, right? <laughs> so that, that worked out nice. We're just going to jump our, our sharp edges here. Dang. Sharp edges. Uh, jump a couple things together. We're going to see if we can't get this communication network back. Uh, missed. I can't see what I'm doing, man. It's got to be the hardest problem I have these days. My eyeballs not working as well as they used to. Hmm. Totally missing the ball. There, got that one. And so what I think was happening is the CAN bus was getting compromised. And these things are, oh, you gotta reset them all the way, I think. I don't understand how to work these strippers. Don't, don't buy the blue point ones yourself. Guys, don't, uh, don't get mad if you, at me because I don't know how to work the tool I'm using. It's the biggest thing, you gotta know how to work the tools we have. So I'm getting this side over here, and then we're going to go ahead and jumper this together and take a look back at our scope and see if we have a decent uh, pattern. I still missed it. But more importantly, we're going to see if that HVAC module comes online. There we go. So we're going to go uh, the purple here to the purple over here. Real quick like. And we're going to do our this guy to this guy and uh, I honestly don't know what else is in that connector we know there's other problems here um, but we'll see uh, by chance if our network came back so that's what we're going to go check out and also is our HVAC control module online I think this is probably the big problem with this vehicle this is going to be a key point in the future we're going to be looking at uh, look at this Doug let me oh heck yeah look at that pattern that's pretty, guys. That's how the bus is supposed to look, right? So just so you know, if I stack these on top of each other, put my zeros, oh, there we go. Get this zero down there and get the zero down there. You can see that is what the medium speed bus should look like. Doug, I think we're on to something. Are you good with this? Back. It's back. It works. Let's get the scanner out. Um, I know we're going to have some codes in the back end of this thing. Let's go ahead and clear and retest. And uh, guys, this could have been some other problems too on a vehicle, who knows? Um, so we're gonna run all CMDTCs. The big thing I'm looking for is to make sure my HVAC control module's back online. HVAC's online, we do have a start, sta stop, status indicator. 
I don't know why that code's there, but we do have a we don't have a button. We don't have a button. And uh, guys, if I'm not mistaken, we had that code with the original one when we plugged the original one and when the communication was coming going a month or two ago when I programmed it. So not so worried about that. If they connector but no switch. Yeah, connector, no switch, and that's hanging out over here. Um, but I'm pretty sure this customer is going to be happy uh, to have their van running because the Ford dealer has been on, what, saying a month or two out or something crazy. That's what I'm going to start saying. All right, guys, I think this one's a wrap. Well, hey, guys, thanks a lot for taking the time to watch. If you like this content, please do like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. I do appreciate all that. Also, let me know in the comments how you would fix this without a scope. I'm not telling you that it's impossible. Nothing is impossible. We can always find a way. Um, but I think it would have been a lot of trial and error and guessing. If you didn't have a scope to get on there uh, on that CAN bus and see what's going on, I really don't know how you'd find it quickly. So uh, with that being said, like I said, uh, you guys like, subscribe, ring that bell. Have a great day. Bye-bye.